Hey guys, my name is Nina and today we're doing this. I would just like to clarify that I don't hate Sam Dean in her entirety. Okay, there's just some parts of the show that rub me the wrong way and I want to talk about them. And some of these things will be a little bit nitpicky because I was watching her scenes through the lens of why this character is bad. So you can come at me in the comments if you want, but we'll get into the nitty gritty later on. So at first Sam comes off as like the most likable character ever. Like everybody likes her. She's really nice to everybody. She's really approachable. There's just nothing that you can hate about her. But you have to remember that you're seeing her through the eyes of Josh. You're seeing her through Josh's memories and those can be distorted. They're not reliable. He's not a reliable narrator. He thinks that she's an angel and that she can do no wrong. And that's honestly one of the bases of their problems. Early on in one of Josh's flashbacks, she gets so offended about being called nice. Nice? Nice is what you say when you have nothing else to say about someone. It's lame. What? I'm not nice. And I'm like, why? What's wrong with being someone that everyone can get along with, that's approachable? What's wrong with being someone who puts smiles on other people's faces or makes them feel happy about themselves? What's wrong with that? Why is it boring? Why is it lame? It shouldn't be. It's a great compliment and she's so like weird about it. Like stop. I guess the way he delivered it was kind of like you're nice but it's a good word. Can we just all agree that it's like a good word? It's a good thing to be called. I mean you don't want to be mean. <laughs> Now, about her vlog, she admits that it's not her and it's just the best parts of her personality cut together. But that is you. That's part of your personality. You can't deny that it's you that they're seeing. Unless you're admitting that you're being completely fake in the video. She then says that she wishes he hadn't posted it because of, I guess, the mean, hateful comments and the comments on her fakeness. But it's like, you're the one that wanted to record it in the first place. Was it really just gonna be for yourself to watch back? Or did you wanna put it somewhere? I find it hard to believe that she was just gonna keep it for herself and go back and watch it on her own. It's kind of a little selfish or like self-centered. It's just weird. So don't get mad at Josh for posting it when clearly that was your intention. And then when they had their first hangout in the mall, she made Josh feel embarrassed about thinking that it was a date. I just, I don't know, I thought that we were gonna hang. You didn't think this was a hang. You thought this was a hang hang. I just, I thought that we, we... She didn't need to do that. She didn't need to belittle him like that. Plus this proves that she knew what he thought this relationship was gonna be, and yet she still treated him the way that she did in the Postmates episode. Speaking of the Postmates episode, now this is where we get into the nitty gritty, like I said before. I don't know why I keep using nitty gritty, but it's gonna, that's how it's gonna be, okay? So we're on the Postmates episode. She, <laughs> I love, I, love how I made it seem like I'm gonna get into like the raunchy parts of her character, but then this is the first thing I'm gonna say. She forces Josh to get ramen when he clearly doesn't want any ramen. Okay, listen, some people don't like ramen. He's a picky eater and that's fine and you need to accept it and stop forcing new things onto him. Even though he ends up liking the cool food that she gets, but like, still. Forcing is not okay. Why am I frozen? Satin sheets and a broken hymen. How many people have you slept with? Was it with anyone that I know? Does it matter? Why does she get so angry when he asks her how many people that she's been with and who? I get that it's not a great question to ask, but he's clearly inexperienced in the topic in general, and she needs to show a little more compassion. And if it truly didn't matter, then why wouldn't she just say? Of course his reaction might not be great, but that's on him, not on her, and then they can have a conversation about why it shouldn't matter. And plus he says that it doesn't matter, and then she goes on to make him feel like shit. And then Josh tries to explain why he asked the question. It's just a question. I'm just curious. Does it change how you see me? I just don't know why you didn't tell me about this, Sam. And I think that it's a valid point. You'd think in a healthy relationship that you would sit down and talk about this sort of thing with your partner before you even did anything else. And considering she had a whole consent app, you would think that she's used to talking about this sort of thing and being open about this topic. It's not 1950, I'm not your girl. We're what then? You are such a child. She says that she's not his girl, and then when he asks her what they are, she calls him a child, when she's the one being childish by not being straightforward with him and dodging questions that seem to be reasonable. 
whether they are in a relationship or not, they were going to have sex. And that warrants a conversation about your sexual history. Or if there is something about it that you wanna keep private, it's easier to say, there's something I wanna keep private, than to just start attacking him. Then she just goes really crazy and like, what's her deal? Like, what is going on in these scenes? And like, why make him feel like shit when he's clearly insecure about his own experience and he feels like it's his own fault that the thing didn't work out because he's the only one that doesn't have the experience. Like he was just blindsided by this information and he probably feels embarrassed and sad that he couldn't share his first time with someone else who was also having their first time. And it's a valid feeling. Not to say that her having more experience than him is a bad thing, but it should have been a conversation that they had beforehand so that everybody was on the same page. Then she goes on to make the Postmates guy feel really uncomfortable and confused. And yet he's still freaking smitten with her. Like what the heck, dude? Now we'll move on to the pool scene. I should be able to fuck whoever I want, whenever I want, without judgment. And now I'm what? The neighborhood bicycle? Queen Guinevere, the skunt of Avalon. Why do you get to be a stud if you bang me, but I'm an easy fuck oven if I have sex with anyone else? Why is she putting words in his mouth? It didn't seem like he all of a sudden thought that she was a slut. He was just caught off guard and now she's thinking the worst of him without even letting him speak. She's almost doing the exact same thing that she thinks he's doing. She's judging what he's thinking about. She's judging what he could possibly think of her just like she thinks he's judging her. This is why communication is key, people. That includes listening and absorbing information and not just assuming. You know what they say about assuming. The way that she's feeling about people possibly perceiving her as a slut is a valid feeling, but that doesn't mean that Josh does or that she should be angry with him for what she thinks he's thinking. Then she gets upset at Josh for saying I love you when she doesn't think that he knows her well enough. I kind of get that actually. He did seem to say it a little too early, and it's sort of a commentary on how these team shows seem to make these love stories seem so perfect and quick. So her being annoyed with him for that makes sense, but the rest does not. Like what happened to her to make her feel so suspicious and angry and put all of the problems of a male-dominated society on one dude? And in the middle of that whole sporadic conversation that they're having, she brings up this theoretical about her maybe wanting to be something other than a cisgendered female that is straight. I might want to be polyamorous. I might want to join a thrapple or be asexual or demi or gyne. And it's like, once again, something that you're gonna have a conversation about with your partner rather than getting angry at him for something he didn't know was going through your mind. He can't freaking read it. Now about the scene that happens after all this, when Josh finds out that his dad has died, I will 100% admit that the way he reacts to his dad's death by blaming her is not okay. He is completely invalidating her feelings, especially by throwing the slut thing back in her face. Now, I truly believe that her being a slut isn't something that crossed his mind during all of their arguments, but he knew that it would be something that would hurt her. And I think he wanted to hurt her because he blamed her for missing his dad's death because she was doing all that crazy shit. They both seem so immature and this entire episode was a dang roller coaster. Now fast forward to the last episode when they finally reunite. She has the nerve to call him a hypocrite when she was the one saying that she's not his girl and that she didn't want to define the relationship. Not only that, they're in the middle of the frickin' apocalypse and he thinks that she's dead. So like, what the heck? Yes, everything that he said to her in the last scene that we talked about was shitty. However, she truly believes that she should be allowed to sleep around and shouldn't be shamed for it. Therefore, he should also be allowed to do the same thing and also not be shamed for it or called a hypocrite. But yes, he shouldn't have shamed her for it in anger. And the fact that she acts all upset about it is really annoying because in the end, she rejects him. Like, you can't play games with him like that, girl! And the whole end part, betraying and stealing the throne, just seems sort of random. Like, yes, she isn't some damsel that's in need of saving, but why is she acting so dictato dictatorial? That's a hard word. Dictatorial all of a sudden. Like she's the best possible leader and everybody else is an idiot. It just doesn't seem like how she acted in his flashbacks, but I guess that just proves that his narration is unreliable. And I don't like her my way or the highway attitude. She's just like Allie in the society where she thinks that she's the only one that can make the right decisions and she needs to get the brutal football team on her side. She's almost worse than Allie though because she doesn't seem to be doing it for the right reasons. Like she seems to only be doing it to get away from her goody two shoes image that appears in the video and like, dumb? In the end though, I can't be too surprised because she does say to choose yourself when she's talking to Wesley on the stairs. It's like, 
just proving that she's kind of selfish and she thinks that she's the best. But maybe I'm going a little too far with that analysis. Anyways, all in all, I am so sad that this show got canceled. It was so great because of its plot and its characters, but mostly because of its unique format. We got to see from the perspective of so many different characters in their own unique voices. The characters themselves were so diverse and quirky and I love the relationship between Angelica and Miss Crumble and how it filled a hole that was missing in Angelica's life. Also, one of my favorite characters was Eli. He was so hilarious and over the top and even though he was in it for himself most of the time, his death really got to me. Like I cried so much. I miss him. I love him. And getting to see Wesley's character development change in fragments was sort of interesting because normally you see that in a linear fashion, but it was a different format in this show and it was great. And the music in this show was so awesome. I hardly ever listen to the score unless it stands out to me instead of just, you know, as background music. And dude, literally all the songs in this show stood out to me and pulled me right in and I loved it. I so badly wish that this show wasn't canceled and I've linked down below a petition that someone has made to keep the show going. I don't think it's gonna work, but it can't hurt to try. Anyways guys, that's all I have to say about Daybreak today. I know that you're gonna come for me about Sam because she is a great female character that is so different from any other lead character that I've seen. She's not obsessed with the guy, she just wants to go after what she wants and she wants to be seen for who she is. And you know what, she is great. But there's just some things that she did in this show that really grinded my gears. Anyway, if you disagree with me, write it in the comments. Write anything about this show in the comments because I want to read all about it because I'm really interested in what everybody else has to say and I want to start a conversation about it. If there's any other show that you want me to watch and make a video about, let me know because I need them. Also, please subscribe, like this video, and follow me on my socials. See you next time. What? What am I saying?